Hello, makeover friends. This is Shannon with Black Sheep House. In today's video, we're giving my dining area makeover, and I'm really excited about it. We're going to be trying to come up with a bigger table, make the room look bigger by using mirrors, making sure I have lots of storage with my cubbies, and also trying to figure out a DIY light solution. So it's jam-packed. It's going to be a fun video. This table popped up on Facebook Marketplace. It was $75 and came with six chairs. I'm gonna sell the chairs, and so I think in the end I'll probably only have paid about $40 for this table. It needs a little bit of love, but what does it? <laughs> I'm sanding it with a 80 grit, and then 120, and then 220 with just my cheap uh, sander that is, has done a good job so far, but I think it <laughs> is time to upgrade. <laughs> I should really upgrade some of my tools, you know? It's so tempting because if something's not broken, why fix it? But I know that some of the other sanders do a quicker job. But this Ryobi has done a great job so far and, and gotten me where I am. So I'm grateful for that. Hubby came in and helped me fix the bottom of the table. We didn't end up being able to fix it 100%, but it's good enough for us in our dining room. And these are just clamps that we found at Walmart to make the table just kind of squeeze it back together where it had warped and then I wanted to like I said make the room look bigger using mirrors but when I ordered mirrors and I just ordered the cheap ones from Walmart you know like the door mirrors they're like eight dollars a piece it ended up looking too I don't know what the word is it looked I, I've come from a dance background so it looked too dance studio for me <laughs> and it was just weird having like a reflection of all of us and a reflection of my messy kitchen honestly so I decided to look for some alternative to cover the mirrors and give it a little bit more of a vintage feel and I found these really cool clings at Lowe's and they are for windows but you can use them for mirrors as well you can cut them to size they're really cool product the only problem was they smelled really bad so open a window <laughs> and be ready for that. But uh, all in all, I'm a huge fan of these. Hello, Ramona. I can't shake the simplest feeling. On the ghost, we stand on the opposite shore. Hello, Ramona. I reach through mysterious ceilings, my holy hope. I look for the things I don't know. Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know if all in this I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know Honestly don't 
I should be the last to know we're all in this I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I think you get the idea. It's a pretty easy DIY, a couple of hula hoops and some contact paper. I use some paper left over from the mirror project that I did, or you could use poster board. I just had this zany idea. I thought, I wonder if a hula hoop... When I was at the Dollar Tree, I wonder if one of these hula hoops would fit around my light fixture and I could have an updated light fixture. And I went online and Googled it and there was this lady, one Spring Street blog, who had done this back in 2014. She did it a lot differently and, and hers is a, a totally different vibe, but she did use two hula hoops like me and some other she used some other materials but anyway it's a really cool diy you should check it out check her blog out and she goes into a lot of detail and just super easy and fun the next thing i did was move the mirrors closer together i liked the idea of them looking a little bit more like a window and then so i found this sticky trim to just give it a little bit more bulk and cover up any of the gaps that were in between the mirrors because just from the manufacturer, they're not made perfectly straight. And then I painted it, uh, the frame of the mirrors tan. That was kind of tricky. I should have done that before, right? <laughs> but I didn't know that I wanted them tan until after I had them up there and I realized the white was too bright. Next thing I'm doing is going back to the table. It's had time to dry and it rained a few days and so I was having trouble getting work done on the table, but back at it. I'm doing a whitewash with um, Valspar cabinet and furniture enamel, but you can use any paint you want as long as it's water-based and just half water, half paint is what I'm doing, but you can play around with your mixture. And this is a gray color. It's very similar to the color Sterling from Fusion Mineral Paint, if you're familiar with that. Um, it's just a nice light gray color, really pretty. And I'm gonna be using this for the base, and that's why I decided to use it for the whitewash. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't use the cabinet enamel for a whitewash just because it's more expensive paint and you don't need expensive paint for a whitewash. <laughs> you can use the cheap sample paint, flat paint, anything you want that's got, because you're really just using it for the color, not any kind of durability. And then I'm gonna wipe it on there with this staining pad, but you could use paper towels. I've experimented with a couple different things and I'm no master at whitewashing and all that stuff. It, I'm still figuring it out. It would be awesome to have this be a two person job. One person wiping it on and continuing to keep a wet edge while the other person goes behind you with the paper towel and wipes it away or a towel or whatever. Because what you run into when you do it my way here as a solo man is it dries a little quickly and then sometimes you'll have lines, which is fine when you have this wood that has lines in it as well. You know, there's going to be a lot of variation in the finish. But if you're going for something that is all one solid piece and you don't want those lines in it, like I said, it would be awesome to do this as a two person job or to figure out how to do it where you were painting it on and wiping it off and painting it on and wiping it off. I don't know. <laughs> there needs to be like some um, invention going on here, but that is what I did. I'm gonna whitewash it and then gonna do some brown on top of it.
What you just saw me do was create a custom glaze out of half rust-oleum decorative glaze in the color java and half clear coat because i was a little worried and i used a water-based polyurethane for the clear coat like i mentioned earlier this would be such a great two-person job one person brushing it on and then another person doing the wiping away i think that the more skilled person should do the wiping away part and i think it would go a lot smoother but you're just essentially doing the same thing that we did with the gray wash painting it on and then wiping it away with the cloth of your choice in my case it's paper towels I found these flowers on Amazon and they're so cute and pretty. This bowl is really special to us. And then you get to see my other daughter. You don't get to see her too much. She's camera shy. Plus she's always at school, but she loves flowers. So I had to recruit her. <laughs> And then we're just going to make a simple centerpiece with these roses. There's 12 of them. And then eucalyptus is going to be the filler. And then you saw the tape with... Uh, the top and stuff. So yeah, it's going to be a fun little centerpiece for us. And then let's take a look at the before. And let's see the after. Wow, it's so pretty. I can't wait to have dinner in this space and invite people over and be so proud. It has been such a fun transformation, so rewarding. I'm really, really happy with the color of the stain and the flower arrangement and the glass, but not being a, a straight up mirror. Uh, I just, this space is my new favorite space in the house right now. I have so much storage with those cubbies. Those are just random. It's three different cubbies that I found on separate occasions thrifting, and they're all pretty close in height and I'm just so happy with this space. I think I'll, you know, get find some chairs that I think will work for the space, maybe um, four chairs or something like that, and then I'll get some padding for the cubbies and the benches, and we're good to go. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.